I don't believe innovation and experimentation is a one and done. I don't believe it belongs to one team or one set of people. So we're encouraging everybody in IT, in fact, everybody across our whole organization to be curious, which I think curiosity really lends itself to innovation and experimentation. Welcome to Technovation. I'm your host, Peter High. My guest today is Leslie Salmon. Leslie is the Senior Vice President and Chief Digital and Information Officer of Kellanova, a company that was formed when the global snacking branch of Kellogg's was separated from the North American cereal part of the company. Kellanova earns in excess of $13 billion in annual revenue. Leslie is the first Chief Digital and Information Officer of the company, and this follows her tenure as CDIO at Kellogg's prior to the spinoff. She was the Kellogg's global CIO prior to that. In all, she spent 11 years at the combined Kellogg's and Kellanova. I look forward to hearing more about the spinoff's implications for IT, how she's driving product innovation, and what it's like to be a UK-based executive of a company headquartered in Chicago, Illinois. And perhaps we'll have a chance to get her impressions of Jerry Seinfeld's new Pop-Tart movie as well. Leslie, thanks for joining me on Technovation. It's great to see you today. Thank you, Peter. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you. I'm looking forward to our session. Yeah, it's wonderful. Well, Leslie, can you take a moment and provide an overview as to Kellanova's business for those who may be a little less familiar with, uh, with that brand name as it is? Yeah, of course I can. Thank you, Peter. So we, we describe ourselves kind of as a 118-year-old brand new company, which is Kellanova. Um, and why is that? That is because back in 2022, Kellogg Company, as was, announced our plans to separate our North America cereal business, which would result in two independent, publicly traded companies um, with the idea of each being better positioned to unlock their full potential. Um, and this is known as a spin. So that spin was completed in October 2023, resulted in two publicly traded companies, Kellanova, what we're here to talk about today, and WK Kellogg Co., um, so yeah, a huge lift, as you can imagine, for our IT function. Um, and every element of the spin had an IT component. Um, so yeah, very, very uh, once in a once in a career opportunity if you work in IT. Fascinating. So uh, as we speak, at least right now, uh, seven or so months uh, since the spin itself. Uh, I should mention you were uh, the the chief digital and information officer of Kellogg's uh, prior to the spin. And so obviously very deeply involved in, in the spin and the many, I can only imagine, uh, heavy lifts that were necessary in order to create these two independent organizations. Um, there's there's a general question I, I, I may ask, and, and but I, as you think, as you reflect upon the uh, the spin, um, can you talk a bit about how one plans for something like that? Uh, clearly, one of the biggest undertakings you, as you as you note, in your career, um, how, how one thinks about the the process, the, the people implications, the processes, yep. the technology, and beyond. Can you can you offer at least a few perspectives? Uh, let me touch on a few things. A few things that made us successful. Um, having the right building blocks in place was really critical. Let me talk what I mean about this. So we have. Um, we have created a one team mantra across our global IT function. And I believe this is a, a key differentiator to everything that we do here at Kellanova. And that means although we're four regions and we've got regional teams and we've got center teams, we come together and we head in the same direction and we put our enterprise hats on and we make things happen together. So kind of table stakes, one team, one team key key differentiator to everything that we do. Um, and then what else? What else mattered to our success? So if you think about what we did for a moment, it was almost magic because we created two of everything from one of everything. So at the very simplest level, taking one publicly traded company, creating two completely independent trading companies, everything to IT needed to be duplicated. Our infrastructure, our cyber landscape, applications, data platforms, and teams. So another foundational element that really helped us was having a, a really strong cloud strategy. Um, and we had a really good position and that was a key enabler to us achieving that magic. <laughs> and this is where our enterprise level strategy really, really paid off. So we kind of leading edge from a, a cloud adoption perspective. We were already 100% on the cloud. So we could achieve 
that duplication by leveraging the scalability, the agility, you know, the cost effectiveness of cloud computing. We didn't have a traditional data center to replicate or to migrate out of because we'd already completed that project. Um, and that approach goes for a lot of our solutions as well. So, you know, standing up a new software as a service solution, whilst it's not easy, it's much lighter lift for our Kellen over IT team than traditional on-prem solutions. Um, and then you mentioned people. So if I, I think about the people side. We'd also, over the course of the, the, the prior years, addressed most of our single points of failure, which was key to us being able to stand up a second IT function with a really high level of capability and, and potential. And you know, by single point of failure, I mean ensuring that not all of our knowledge or capability was in any one individual. Because even if you've got two Two. When you create two companies, you've only got one in, in both of those companies. And we put a, an awful lot of work in um, in the prior years, fortunately, running up to this to diversify that knowledge. And I'm really proud of the fact that we were able to stand up two highly skilled, very capable IT functions, setting both companies up for success from a, a technology perspective. And, and uh, Leslie, you, you were the Global Chief Information Officer of Kellogg's dating back to uh, March of 2019. You would add the That's digital right. to, to your title there as well. Talk That's a bit right. about your current purview in Kellanova and some of the changes for you personally uh, as a result of the, the spin. Yeah, sure. So uh, thank you for that. Yeah, I'm the Chief Digital and Information Officer of, of Kellanova. Um, so I've retained the, the global elements. We're now a global snacking powerhouse. We've got some really iconic world-class brands uh, and strong underlying growth and profit profitability, which is, I pinch myself every day. And it's a complex environment because we've got over a thousand products. We're marketing in about 180 countries and we've got over 23,000 people. Um, and we do really good things as well. So this is all the things that we've retained as we've become Kellanova. And one of those things is our Better Days promise. And our Better Days promise is um, a commitment to creating better days for 4 billion people by the end of 2030. So I get to still be part of all of that amazing elements. Um, but in terms of my role overall, I like to say I'm a business leader, first and foremost. I happen to be a technology specialist as well. Um, and I think that really set me up in good stead for getting the D in my title. I was previously CIO, CDIO, really reflecting the fact that we're not a back office technology function. We are front end driving business value. Um, and ultimately, then and now, I'm on the hook for maximizing the value that we can create for Kellanova by making sure our IT strategy powers our business strategy, really delivering impactful business outcomes. I sit as part of our executive team, I report directly into the CEO. Um, my global IT leadership team includes our four regional CIOs. We've got some center leaders, so covering cyber, integrated delivery and sustainment, data and analytics, business relationship managers. Um, and I also include our business partners in that global team. So we cover legal HR, comms, procurement and finance. And it's, it's that group of diverse leaders and really using the power of that group that enables us to bring uh, a customer centric focus, you know, not being tunnel vision, but really bringing a, a customer centric focus. Um, and together we're responsible for end to end digital technology solutions for all of our employees who in turn help deliver food to the millions of global consumers that, that we've got around the world with our fantastic brands. That's fantastic. What a, what a great overview. Thank you for that, Leslie. I, I know um, among your strategic priorities uh, is offering up better, faster data insights. I love you. Several of the priorities that I've noted, and I'd love to maybe hit on a few of them for some examples as to how this translates into the day to day work that your team does. Can you offer some some thoughts about how that uh, is brought to life? Yeah, of course I can. Um... I take us back to the spin for one moment and talk about Please. some data related to the spin. So, um, yeah, I've talked about it being complex. We updated over 300 systems. We executed over 4,300 test scripts. We did over 1,600 SAP transports and created a, a whopping 7,800 user IDs, 1,700 laptops, millions of, of Yoda moments. Yoda is our, our learning program. And the reason I mention that is because we're aiming to take a data approach to ourselves in IT as well. Our mantra is better data, bigger possibilities. 
And we're starting to live that within our IT function. So how can we be more data driven and use the tools at our disposal to drive more value? Because I believe that will help us better connect with our other functional colleagues to bring data to life. So a couple of ways that we're doing that already, um, if I shift to the, the, the business focused element. So, you know, CPG, consumer packaged goods industry, it just continues to undergo massive transformation, which is driven by consumer behaviors, technological advancements. Um, and innovation is key to Kellanova staying competitive. I've talked about our brands. Those brands can't stay still. We need to continue to push innovation. And our IT team is integrating our existing systems with cutting edge, edge systems, edge technologies to enhance our processes, improve our customer experiences, and really streamline our operation. Really, in our CPG industry, we're using data to bring elements to life. A couple of ways we're doing this, artificial intelligence, machine learning, like the revolution revolutionizing many aspects of our business, whether it's supply chain management to innovation from procurement to personalized marketing, there's endless opportunities and we're looking to drive top line growth as well as efficiency and margin expansion. Um, AI, Gen AI machine learning help us analyze our vast amounts of data so we can optimize inventory. So, you know, inventory absolutely drops to the bottom line, better demand forecasting, make sure we've got the stock on the shelves where, when and where our, our customers and our consumers want to buy it. Um, and we're also using Gen AI. Um, now, I know it's 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 a buzzword, but it's not a buzzword because it's here and now and it's very real. Uh, we're using Gen AI in, in various different areas, one of which is around en enhancing our customer engagement with personalized recommendations, you know, based upon consumer behaviors and preferences. And we're doing all of this. There's one more build on this before I pause, but we're doing all of this with one of our core values of integrity because these technology advancements are so powerful. <laughs> but with power, you know, a lot of power comes opportunity, responsibility, and risk. So we're making sure we balance those. We're doing the right thing in the right way. Um, and we've established a, a Gen AI council with guardrails for our company so we can build solid foundations around this data ethics governance approach um, very, very intentionally because we didn't want it to run away without us having those guardrails in place. <laughs> no, that's phenomenal. Can you talk a little bit about the constitution of that the Gen AI Council? I assume it brings together people with a variety of different disciplines. Can you, that's right. can you name some of those if you would? Yeah, of course I can. Probably the trio at the center is IT, legal and comms. So if you think we kind of IT are looking at what are the technology advances, what are the technologies that we want to adopt and drive across our business where actually don't, don't we believe it's the right thing. Legal, obviously, from a compliance perspective, massive amount of com compliance and regulations popping up all over the all over the place at, at the moment. And then comms because it's really important for us to communicate internally with our own company what we're doing in this area. Because Generative AI tools, AI tools, um, they're so prevalent. A anybody and everybody can buy AI tools. Um, and if we don't help our employees to understand the power of these tools, we won't set ourselves up for success in the future. So that's really the, the core at the heart of the council. Yeah, well, so much of what you talked about clearly also bleeds into a, another strategic priority, which is innovation and experimentation. I'm, I'm hearing elements of innovation and experimentation in all of what you just described. And maybe you could talk a little bit more about the the methods the team uses and the extent to which it's a, is it a cordoned off uh, portion of the team that focuses on this? Is it a broader set of responsibilities? Uh, describe that if you would. Oh, this is a great question. And you've touched on some key elements. So we're, we're working on creating a culture of innovation across our IT function because I don't believe innovation and experimentation is a one and done. I don't believe it belongs to one team or one set of people. So we're encouraging everybody in IT, in fact, everybody across our whole organization to be curious, which I think curiosity really lends itself to innovation and experimentation. Um, and we've got a couple of a couple of initiatives that I'm so, so proud of. If you think about when ChatGPT, when it first became mainstream, 
lots of companies, you know, they locked it down, they blocked it, they didn't want their employees using it. And I understand why, because it was a little bit scary. We didn't do that. We embraced it and we invited everybody in our organization to experiment. And we said to them, be curious, but cautious. Don't input any Kelanova data in it, but we're not going to block you from using it because this is the future. And we need people to not be scared of technology and not be scared of new things because we live in such a fast changing world, you know, getting people to try and be comfortable with new things is is critical for the future. Um, and one of the ways that we did that, we've, um, and I'm so proud of, of this, we've created, I guess, an event called a curiosity clinic. So we invite everybody, everybody from our company, totally optional, invited to join a curiosity clinic. And we've had an exceptional response. We've had over five close to 6,000 people now have attended these clinics. And the focus initially was on Microsoft Copilot for the web. So we embraced Microsoft Copilot for the web. We'd already invited people to be curious, but cautious. And now we could say, throw caution to the wind. This is internal to us, you know, use this in whichever way you want. And we, we used it in fun ways. So we created greetings card. We asked them to create new products, artwork for, you know, wacky new products, maybe a new flavor of Pringles or link Pringles with cheese. It's whatever it, whatever it may be. And, and anybody and everybody from our regional presidents to interns to line workers were invited to these sessions. We have some Phenomenal, phenomenal responses. Um, so you know what? If you imagine our next new stack may have originated from one of our curiosity clinics. Which again, fascinating, by the way. Thank you so much for sharing uh, that this curiosity clinic sound like such a worthwhile way to build acumen and, and well, indeed, and curiosity and experimentation, as you point out, which then I think leads nicely, as I say, leads into uh, the, the building digital skill sets on the team, another area of priority I know you have. Um, can you talk a bit about how you are thinking about upskilling the organization and building the skills of tomorrow as opposed to simply resting on the laurels of those of today and yesterday? Yeah, sure. You know, I talked about culture of innovation because I really believe like, creating a culture is the way forward. Uh, and I'd, I'd stepped into this role in 2019. And one of the one of the things that I heard from our team through our employee engagement surveys is they wanted more focus on learning opportunities and development opportunities. And we take feedback very seriously as a leadership team. Um, so we wanted to address it. And out of that was born... Um, Yoda. <laughs> now, Yoda is our year of development always. It used to be Yod, but actually we realized it's not a one and done, it's forever. So it became Yoda, which is way more catchy. And Yoda's vision is to venture to new horizons by cultivating our childhood curiosity to learn and grow. And our mission is to give everybody a Yoda moment. So Yoda really embraced a culture of learning. So a little like the culture of, uh, of innovation, it's a culture of learning. So finding those learning moments in the everyday, as well as more specific. And we created several tracks in Yoda. So we've got a technical training track, career strategy, and we've got virtual programs that are built around topics that matter most at any one particular time. Um, and as part of career strategies, again, I'm really proud of this. We do reverse mentoring. So I get to mentor with with a more junior, well, I get mentored by a more junior member of our team who bring a completely different perspective. Um, you know, I'm, I'm 25 years away from, from that position in business. So they bring a completely different perspective that helps me think and learn and have Yoda moments as to how I can be a better, a better leader for our team. So that's Yoda. It's been incredibly successful and it's been living for about five years now, which is wonderful. And then outside of IT, so Yoda is very much IT focused. Outside of IT, we focus on upskilling our whole enterprise through a program called WorkSmart. WorkSmart started off as a, a grassroots initiative by one of my IT colleagues just wanting to share tips and tricks and different ways of working in, in our Microsoft tools. Now it gathered momentum and it's grown beyond any of our wildest dreams. And it's now a global program that really helps people embrace new ways of working, giving them confidence in the digital world of work, um, learning to work smarter, not harder, getting the most out of our tools. And there's a well-being support in there as well. You know, how do you put digital boundaries in place because it's so easy to be forever on? Um, so 
a couple of initiatives that we that we roll out and and I think created by the people for the people makes them so much more powerful than any top-down initiative we could have done. Really interesting. As you mentioned a few moments ago, uh, the addition of digital to your title is emblematic of your team's broader contribution, uh, not not simply a support organization, but a value driver. And I think one of the uh, interesting puzzles that any CDIO needs to solve is um, balancing business impact with the necessity to remain secure and safe. Yep. Um, you know, that that you might think of those as a balance to some extent that uh, if it were the, as we would say in the U.S., the Wild West and anything goes, and, <laughs> and of course, you're, you know, you're not going to be as secure as you need to be. But on the other hand, of course, if, uh, if security is, is, uh, if, if, if uh, ideas are locked down to such an extent, then innovation, which is about risk taking at the end of the day as well, yeah. might, might not be where it needs to be. Can you talk a bit about how you think about that balance? Yeah, yeah, sure. And it, what I would say is we try to start with a, a business back approach. So understand the value. There's very few projects that are IT projects or technology projects. That's kind of a means to an end to the objective outside of foundational upgrades, network upgrades, things like that. Um, the best projects are business projects that are powered by technology. So I think if we start with that lens and understand the value that a project is going to bring to the business, that really helps us position on on that risk matrix as to, you know, if it's going to deliver $10 worth of value, like we're not taking any risks, it's really not worth it. You know, if it's a multi-million or a billion dollar opportunity, well, okay, we're probably going to think much more seriously about a, a risk-based approach. So starting by understanding the business value and then and then bringing everything else into it. Now, I talked a little bit earlier about the, the Gen AI Council and the, the partnerships that we've got there. That That's one council. We actually have really strong collaboration and partnership across the whole of our executive committee. So I have really strong partnership with our legal team because really it's it's the two of us, it's our partnership that's going to drive the compliance for the business and kind of balance where the risk is. Um, and we neither of us, neither legal nor IT, we're not in the business of saying no. We're in the business of saying, how can we make this happen? So we may get to the end result in a slightly different way, but we will always try to make things happen. Having said that, I'm never going to compromise on cyber. Like it, the 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 value loss, the value loss of putting ourselves into a cyber risk position will outweigh um, the vast majority of business value driving initiatives. So you know we've got red lines on some of our cyber elements to keep us safe and secure, as you mentioned earlier. Um, but really taking that business back approach. How can we drive value? What's the what's the value? And therefore, how do we balance the risk? Makes a lot of sense. I like the way you describe that. I, I've, uh, since March of 2019, you've been an executive of an American headquartered company, but based in the UK. Um, and talk a bit about the the ways. So, so, so dating to pre-COVID, I should say, one might yep. think it's a little bit easier, except maybe uh, different sleep patterns for somebody like yourself and dealing with a lot of colleagues in the US uh, during the period where none of us were traveling a lot um uh or, or in, in offices to to a great extent if, if if there were opportunities not to be um talk a bit about some of the methods that you have used uh uh to ensure the collaboration and the collegiality and uh the cultural elements that you're you're fostering can be brought to life when the, you know there there's at least times where there's some distance between you and uh, at least some of the people who report to you in the broader team yeah, let let me let me start by saying the privilege that I have of being in that role is not lost on me. Every day I pinch myself that I've got the opportunity to be the global CDIO of Kelanova and retain my home in the UK, surrounded by my family. Um, that also comes with a huge sense of responsibility, Peter. I, I was the first global functional leader to be based outside of the US in Kelanova. And I knew I carried this with me that if when I showcased how well it, it, it would work, that it would potentially open doors for other global roles to be based outside of the US. And whilst I'm still the only executive committee functional leader, we have actually adopted a much more global approach to some of our center functional roles. So I'm super proud of that. And the privilege is not lost on me. Um, how did I do it? Um, let me bring three things to life. I would say communication, availability, and boundaries. 
Now, communication, I, I always say that people matter the most. And with that in mind, staying connected with people, my peers, my boss, my teams, external partners was front of mind when I, I took this role on, recognizing that many of my peers, the vast majority of my peers don't sit in my region. Um, and I've done that in a few ways. So in the first year, you know, you mentioned 2019, pre-COVID, and tra travel did feature very, very heavily. So I traveled not just to the US, I traveled around the world to meet people in their own offices, in their own regions, and really create strong relationships because nothing beats being on the ground with people to start to understand you know, their culture, their needs, their constraints that they've got, the opportunities. And you know what? That would have been true wherever in the world I was based. If I was based in the US, I would have been traveling to Europe to understand how things happen in Europe and the other regions that I traveled to. From that, then staying connected, not just when there's a need, but staying connected on a regular basis has been really important for me. And it looks different to each group, you know, across my network. My door's always open for skip level meetings with, with my team. Anybody and everybody across IT and across our, our organization know they can reach out and ask for time with me. And I'll always, I'll always, always find time for people. And I can safely get say I, I get more, if not, I definitely get just as much. I probably get more out of those skip level meetings than the people that, that request them. So people feel like I'm accessible and I'm there. And, you know, when we meet, it's often a case of have have we met in person before? Because the power of collaboration digital tools that we've got now means that the miles just shrink away. Um, and then ensuring a regular cadence with my stakeholders and being really thoughtful about what do I need from them and what do they need from me and how do we jointly maximize our time together? Um and then talking with my global IT team with various different media, so staying connected is really important. I guess the most formal of our connections is with my with my global IT team. We we call this our rock IT session, so kind of our global town hall, if you like. Something that's been really, really key for me is prioritizing two rock IT sessions every month in different time zones because our global IT team operates across many time zones. So it's 14 hours between Singapore and Mexico uh, sometimes in the year. And I want to be available for their working day. So, you know, if you think about the, the time zones that I mentioned, I literally sit in the best possible time zone across the globe to connect with people at Early start, I get to connect with our Asia region. Late in the day, I connect with my colleagues in the US and, and Latin America. Um, and, I, and I started by saying what a privilege it is for me to have this amazing global role while retaining my home in the UK. So one of my aims is to be available at a time that works for other regions. I don't want people to feel like I'm not accessible because I'm not based in any one place or another. Now that brings me to boundaries because in the early days, if I wasn't traveling, um, I'd start at the same time as I always used to start work, you know, in a in my region. So up, oh, shower, office for eight o'clock, start my day. Now, unfortunately, it, it meant that I ended my day with dinner back to the office, whether it's home office or, and then bed. And I I really had to force myself that that wasn't sustainable at all. So I still make myself available across time zones, but I maintain control of my calendar. That's really, really important. It took me a long time to not feel guilty about having lazy mornings, shower, have breakfast with my husband, take the dog for a walk. If I've got a late finish, I might not start till 11 a.m. Or I might start early, take a three or four hour break during the day, watch one of my binge watch episodes, watch Unfrosted, and then go back for a late shift. And, and sometimes it means getting up in the middle of the night. Um, and that's okay, because I make it work for me. So I'd say those three things, communication, availability, and boundaries, super important to me making this global role work from the UK. So oh, Pop-Tarts is within uh, Kelanova. What did, what did you think of the Unfrosted movie? Yeah, no, it is within Kelanova. I think it's uh, amazing. Now, whilst we weren't involved in the actual making of the movie, um, Peter, it's phenomenal. I mean, it showcases our brand amazingly well. We've had watch parties all over the Kelanova environment and people eating their popcorn, eating their Pop-Tarts whilst <laughs> watching Unfrosted. Really, really bizarre. Very, very surreal. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't already watched it, give it a watch. That's really great. 
Uh, I wanted to ask you, as you, we've talked about uh, through the course of talking about your priorities, a number of trends of consequence that clearly are, are passionate for you. Any that we've not hit as you look to the future that particularly excite you as you think a year or two or three out uh, that you think might be consequential to to an organization like Helenova? Yeah, you know, the trend that we've not talked about that I think we're only just scratching the surface on in Kelanova and I think in a lot of other companies as well is the power of um, digital tw- digital twinning. So loosely, loosely related to the things that we've talked about, I mean, we've got some phenomenal initiatives that we're just starting um, and we're expanding use cases across our business, n- none of which I can talk about right now, but I can't tell you how excited I am about unleashing the power of digital twinning that, that's that's probably one of the trends that most excites me um, and it's and it's here and now it's not far away it's here and now we're just really unlocking and understanding what what business value it can bring to Kellanova again you know not tech for the sake of tech but business value business opportunity back it's going to be phenomenal super interesting I also wanted to ask you uh Leslie as as a uh... Global executive uh, at uh, at a massive organization. Um, as you reflect upon your career, were there some difference makers along the way that have helped propel you to the success that you have had? Uh, any any especially perhaps tuned towards people who are uh, a little bit earlier in their career who might wish to have uh, one that rhymes with yours, so to say. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I, I mean, so many, there's so many to choose from. Um, and I've also been guided by some amazing coaches and mentors through my time here. And I still, you know, every day I wake up and I pinch myself that I've got this amazing opportunity. Let me just touch on three things, really. And I've already talked about people. Um, and as a as a leader, you can't ever forget that people come first. If you look after your people, you invest time in them, you develop them, you empower them, they're going to move mountains for you. Uh, and the day that you wake up and you stop treating people as people, um, as the most important thing in your life, like give up as an executive because that you, you stop being human. So I think people come first and always need to come first. Um, and I've I've learned that and I've probably grown into that people focused approach through my career. You, you know, you begin to understand. You probably start off a little bit selfish, and then you begin to understand that your success is driven by other people's success. Um, and with that, with that in mind, people related still, I would say, don't be afraid to surround yourself with people that have got a deeper knowledge than you. I always had a view um, that I would love to be the one that recruits my future boss. Just think about that for a moment. If you get to pick your future boss, if you get somebody that you think can go all of the way. So in my role now, you know, the CEO, of future CEO of, of, of our, our company or one of our companies sits in my team. Huge, huge, huge. Um, opportunity so yeah people approach um never stop learning so stay up to date in your discipline so technology and also be curious about all the areas of the business that you operate in your peer businesses parallel industries never stop learning you probably fell into a little bit of a trap in the midway through my career I thought I knew everything you know I thought I knew enough and I and I didn't need to learn anymore. And then I came to Kellanova 10 years ago. And I, oh my goodness me, there's a whole world out there that I didn't know about. And so never stop learning. I think it's so important. Um, I love what you do. You know, the day that you wake up and you aren't excited about the day ahead, the week ahead, your three-year strategy, plan some time and get yourself to think about whether you're in the right role in the right company, in the right industry, because we spend far too much time at work to not at least like a lot what you do even if you don't quite love what you do I was just one final thought I know I said three things but just one final thought I would say stay grounded you know it's a huge honor and privilege Peter to be invited to do podcasts like this to get articles published win awards it's quite easy to get carried away with the hype and believe the hype right so stay grounded remember your roots I'm a milkman's daughter and I'm really proud of where I came from uh, and I and I never forget where I came from. So stay grounded and don't get carried away with the hype. 
Well, it's great advice all the way around, Leslie. And thank you for a terrific conversation beyond that. Uh, fascinating to hear more about the work that you're doing, the innovations you're stimulating with your team, of course, um, the progress you're making, the remarkable heavy lift that you've successfully seen through with the spin of uh, Kelanova. Um, thank you so much for taking time with me today. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's been great. Thank you, Peter.